everybody. So today I'm going to do a little series of educational videos um, on magic. You guys know I have a spiritual mentorship program, but I just want to show you some books because I know all of you witches that follow me like books because you're nerds like me. But first I would like to say something about hexes, curses, and jinxes especially towards, like, animals and kids. You know, the Bible teaches us that a man will reap whatever he sows. My grandmama was a very devout Christian woman, and her influence on me and being raised a Christian really instilled in me the idea that you want to treat other people the way you want to be treated. And that one of the highest ideals that we can hold as human beings is to love our neighbor as ourself, show forgiveness towards other people, and cultivate the fruits of the Spirit. I've been doing a lot of research into, let's say, the Indo-European and European um, aspects of my ancestors. I knew when I got back from Africa that I was going to be spending more time trying to reconnect with my father's side of the family since I've spent years trying to connect with my mother's side of the family and it has been a trip. I have been um, really really focused on folk magic the kind of folk magic that was practiced by my German ancestors the ones that left central Germany and came to Pennsylvania those would be the Lutherans, and then also the cunning men, and those healing practices that come from England. Most of those people were Anglicans. And remember, these people practiced their folk magic techniques as Christians. They were not Wiccans. When they called angels, they used the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed. These people were also, you know, herbalist. They had the ability to perform divination for people for pay. And they were also exorcists. They were people that, you know, got rid of the evil spirits. And as I'm studying all of this stuff, you know, all of this Christian-based folk magic, what I realized is that I'm still Christian. Not in the same way a Catholic is a Christian. Not in the same way that a Lutheran or an Anglican is a Christian because I don't read the Bible literally. I recognize the Bible to be a combination of both history and mythology. And we all know that the Old Testament, especially the book of Gen Genesis, that the Jews, or who became the Israelites, took all of the culture, that, the, that pagan culture that existed before them, and syncretized that or absorbed that into their magical religious practices. We also know that Christianity is a pagan religion. Those just Jesus mysteries that originated um, in the, by the Jews that made its way into popular consciousness in Rome became what we know today as Christianity. That, that occult tradition of Christianity survived, and it survived in the Kabbalah, Christian Kabbalah and the magical grimoires. Greco-Egyptian, Roman, and Christian magic. But all of these people had ethics. They had morals. So to them, what separated the magician or the mage or the magus from the sorcerer or the evil witch was their intention. Is your intention to heal? Is it your intention to protect? Is it your intention to invoke the holy angels? Okay, and and drive out evil forces, negative forces, demons? Or was it to call and work with infernal beings and negative forces to be able to uh, hex, curse, and jinx people and bribe these demons to bring you money, wealth, harm your enemies? So there's always kind of been this little struggle between people that practiced creative magic and people that practice destructive magic because they believed in karma. I mean, the, I, the belief in karma is a very ancient belief. And in the Old Testament, it was an eye for an eye. 
you would be met with the judgment according to the severity of what you did. This concept is found everywhere. It's found in Hinduism, it's found in Buddhism, it's found in the Tao. A universal truth among all religions and religio-magical traditions is that you are going to suffer the consequences, consequences of your actions. Maybe not even in this life. Maybe it's the next life. Maybe it's in hell. I'm one of those people that believes in hell. Heaven and hell is a state of mind. And whenever you look at these magicians and witches that practice a lot of baneful magic, you're going to notice that their skin is very gray. They're, they take on a lot of illness. You can just look at their bodies and see that they're not healthy, that they're not well. And if you're around these people, you can feel that negative energy that's swirling around them. And it can even make you mentally and emotionally sick and physically ill when you're associating with these people. And also, those negative forces that people use, that they want to use for baneful magic, they're very, very easy to conjure. They're very, very quick to help you accomplish your will. But there's always a price. Always. So these negative forces, once they attach themselves to a person, they're just going to continue to feed off of that person, kind of like a leech, or like a parasite. Those negative spiritual forces, whatever you want to call them, is going to suck and suck and suck and suck the life force energy out of those people. So there is a very real physical component, a real physic, physical magic component to working with low-level entities and using those forces in order to accomplish any magical purpose. Spiritual cleanliness is important. That's why you'll see in Espiritismo Criollo, Espiritismo Cruzado, you'll see it in Ifa, you'll see it in Santeria, you'll see it in Palo, and in Voodoo. We take a lot of spiritual baths. We say a lot of prayers. We use a lot of invocations. We do a lot of defensive and offensive magical works. And we do this to stay elevated, to avoid um, negativity, push away challenges and obstacles, and attract um, blessings. All of the magic I practice is positive, actually. Most all of the magic that I practice revolves around healing people and performing divination and helping people solve their problems. I do work with angels. And these days my practices are really, really super based in spiritism, like espiritismo. Espiritismo also at its core has a Christian worldview as far as it comes to how we treat and interact with other people. So not all magical practices are people that practice some form of witchcraft or folk magic, practice baneful magic. That's a choice. You make that choice. But there's always going to be a consequence for your actions, always. And if you're practicing a lot of baneful and negative magic, and you're calling a lot of negative low-level entities to you, if nothing else, these entities are going to destroy your health, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And if you're going to do fuck shit, and you're going to lash out and attack innocent people, you are going to start experiencing loss. You're going to start experiencing death. And even though people get like a real power trip off of being able to accomplish negative magic, uh, your soul hangs in the balance. When we die, we will be judged for our actions here on Earth. That, that, that concept exists in Ifa. It existed in ancient Egypt. It exists in Christianity. You will be judged. So it's up to you to determine um, how you want to live your life and whether or not you want to live in a constant state of aggravation and negativity and illness, or whether or not you want to elevate your consciousness and work towards um, helping other people, helping people grow spiritually. I realized recently that my core values are still very influenced by Christianity, and I'm very glad that they are. It really formed the foundation of my morals and ethics when I was young, and it still holds importance for me now. That's just something for all of you to think about today.